Hi guys. So where we got to over the last couple of lectures is we took the equations of motion that we spent uh, module three deriving, and we then said, okay, we, we don't care that they're nonlinear. We also we, we mind that they're nonlinear. So we were going to neglect certain parts of them, and we'll we'll use the Taylor series expansion of our forces to turn them into this format. Now you're not supposed to be able to see this just yet. Let's just zoom in. We've got the symmetric or the longitudinal equations of motion. So we've got the um, the x speed, w speed, and we've got the pitching moment here. And then we've got the asymmetric. So we've got the v velocity, and then we've got two equations, both of which have rolling and yawing moments in. So we're going to do some things to mess around with these. To um, oh, I can see I've, I've not included pipe zero on that one. And we're going to tidy these up and make them slightly easier to sort of interpret. Um, when I was just copying from my sort of crib notes, I noticed that actually I had an incorrect term down here. I had this as being a u dot. Um, I'm not certain what I ended up last lecture being, but I certainly said last lecture um, the only dot term we have can only be a w dot. So w dot is the only acceleration. So have a look at what you've got. I'll make sure it's correct in the accompanying notes and I'll correct those and make sure they're uploaded for the time we go through them. Um, a lot of this though, we're just sort of using it as a means to an end. Guys, you aren't going to be asked to repeat this derivation, but I think it's really important for you guys to understand where things come from. So where we're going to try and get to with these is we would like the equations of motion in state space form. So we'd like to be able to have some sort of time derivative vector is the function of some matrix multiplied by our state vector plus our some control matrix multiplied by the control vector. So we'd like to have one of each of one of these for each of these sets of equations. So we're going to need to do some manipulation and we're going to do some things to tidy up these derivatives a little bit. So we're going to work on each of these equations one by one so we can put them into a form to, like I say, tidy them up a bit. Um, for example, we've got our, like say here, we've got in our pitching moment, we've got a w dot term. That's going to be a little bit confusing um, because w dot is a function of all of these things. Um, and over here, we need to do something to mess around with the, to decouple the rolling and yawing moments. So we'll see how far we get with these. Um, I might split this into two lectures. So we're going to get them into this format. And what we're going to end up with is the dimensional equations of motion in concise form. Okay, so they'll be dimensional, so um, when we got, have got them in this format and we can then say time march these, these equations to see what happens to the, the aircraft, the outputs that we'll get will have the units of velocity in there. Bear in mind these will be perturbational velocities or perturbational rolling rates, or sorry, perturbational pitching, rolling or yawing rates. And that's because these are the, the dimensional equations of motion. It's more common in America to work with the non-dimensional equations of motion. So we're also going to work with those a little bit. We're going to look about how we convert from our dimensional equations of motion to these. The procedure from going between the two is actually a real pain to do. So I'll go through a couple of examples um, showing you how, how we do that. But I'm not going to show you the whole procedure. I'm sort of just going to present these to you. And then I'll give you how we convert between them. Because more often than not, we'll find data in terms of non-dimensional stability derivatives. So things like there'll be C subscript, um, say, say C subscript X subscript U. And that'll be the perturbation of X force with perturbation of forward speed. So we'll use these and sometimes you'll see them presented as a CD instead. So we'll want to, if we get, uh, if, we, if we can pull data out from these, which is often what I'll present them to you in, because we are in America, so I should teach you American methods, we'll put them back into dimensional format in order to get reasonable values out. This is gonna be, over the next couple of lectures, 
what we're doing today is at least doing the concise format for the longitudinal equations of motion, we might get these both done. And we're going to start doing it equation by equation. So let's give these some names. This is our forward speed equation. This is our heave equation. And this one is the pitching moment. So that's why I love having this big infinite canvas because I can scroll all about it, but it might be a real nightmare to try and uh, actually copy on pen and paper because you can't do this. Okay, so I'm going to work with the forward speed equation. Let's go up here. Let's move this all the way up. We're going to simplify this, and as I've snark snarkily written in the notes, we're going to simplify it by introducing some new nomenclature that just sort of helps us disregard things. But we can see on here, um, on the left-hand side, we've got one of our aircraft states in derivative format. So we've got u dot, but we've got an m here as well. So we'll divide both sides by m, and that's going to help us. So we end up with u dot is equal to 1 over m dx on du taken at the trim point multiplied by u plus dx, sorry, plus 1 over m dx on dw taken at the trim point minus g cosine theta trim multiplied by the perturbational trim. So this is a real nightmare to keep writing down. 1 over m multiplied by the partial derivative of the x force with the perturbation of forward, sorry, perturbation of forward speed. So we're going to, these are going to crop up a lot in the work that we do. So we're going to give these a different symbology, or a different symbol rather. Symbology is not, is the, is a, I don't think that's a real word, and if it is, it's probably a, a study. So let's say that x subscript u is exactly that, what we've just defined. So it's 1 over m dx and du defined at u. And very similarly, x w 1 over m dx on dw defined at the trim condition. So then we can rewrite this below as u dot is equal to x u multiplied by u plus x w multiplied by w minus g cosine theta naught theta perturbation. So we've got a simpler expression now for our forward speed. Let's just think about the, what these actually mean. So dx on du has units of newton per meter per second. And we've now just divided that by another mass. So xu has units of newtons kilogram meters per second. So a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So you guys can go through and work out. Actually, these have got. Well, let's let's go through and do it. Let's say. So each of these has just got units of one over second for this particular derivative of xu because we've divided through by the non-dimension sorry by the, by the aircraft weight in this case so this is just for 
these particular derivatives, x u and x w, and we'll see that, again, if we've got a force divided by a force derivative with the velocity, it'll have these units. When we've got pitch rates, etc., we'll get slightly different units out. Um, but we've got our first one, which is the forward speed equation. We've now got our simpler expression for that. Let's do the same for the heave equation now. So we're going to take our heave equation and okay, so that's our heave equation. So again, we're just going to divide through by this m to give us the simplified expression. I'm just going to write this straight out. So w dot is going to be z u u plus z w w plus u naught q minus g sine theta naught theta prime plus z de de. Okay, so these two would have the same units. I'm going to leave it as an exercise to you guys to work out the units of this one here. Post it on Slack once you've managed to figure that out. I want you guys to, to show me for that. So this is our simpler expression for our heave equation. And we're now going to do the same thing with the pitching moment expression. There's a Q dot missing on here, I see. Let me just see if that was missing in the notes. No, it's not. That's just my cat handed nursing copying it out. There should obviously be a Q dot here. Um, otherwise, that equation doesn't make any sense. So let's put that back in over here. Okay, so we want, for the pitching moment expression, the left-hand side has to be the um, pitching acceleration. Dividing through instead, of by m, we're now going to divide through by i y y. So we end up with for this expression again. We're going to end up with it with an equation that's going to be slightly more complicated because we've got this w dot term in there. So let's divide through by that. Q dot is equal to m u u plus mw multiplied by w plus mw dot multiplied by w dot plus mq multiplied by q plus mde de. So hopefully we can see here that mw by definition is going to be one over i y y dm on dw evaluated at the trim state. So we've already got a term for w dot. w dot we know is just equal to this dirty great term in here. So we can substitute that in. So let's rewrite this out. Let's take the first half of this equation. So we've got that. And now what I'm going to put in here is I'm going to take everything from above. This whole right hand side is what my w dot is. And I'm going to take this and substitute it down into this expression here.
And then I've still got two extra channels to put on, so let's just make a second line for this so I can keep it all in one bit. Yeah, you can just about see that. So we're going to have plus mq.q plus mde. -E. So this looks sort of like a bit of a mess, but what we can see is we've got here, I've got mu multiplied by u plus mw dot zu u. So we can quote simplify this and if I say let's introduce some new derivatives. So if I say if I've, if I've got u multiplied by mu and the product of zu mw dot, I'm going to call that something new. I'm going to just call that mu star. So I'm going to write this out. Let's say q dot is equal to mu star multiplied by u. Right over here, it's right in my face, right on my giant forehead, but let's write this out anyway. M, sorry, mu star. mu star is equal to mu plus mw dot multiplied by zu. So then I'm going to do the same for each of these. In fact, let's write this down here. That's not a very good place to have written that. So let's see what we had. We've got M, I've got to see where I am, MW multiplied by W. I've also got MW dot and ZW dot. So that is what my MW star is going to be. then got m w dot I've only got no I don't need m w dot I'm good so what I've got left after this I've got just q here so q I've got multiplied by m w dot here and that's fine let me just check me one second. I don't trust what I've got written down in my crib notes for this because I don't think that's wholly correct. Bear with me one second. And let's just compare this to a textbook a second. Oh no, I'm being stupid, I'm being stupid. It's because I've written this on two lines. So let's have a look. So I'm going to have to have something multiplied by Q. So let's say I've got MQ star. I've forgotten about these terms down here. So MQ star is going to be equal to MW dot U naught plus MQ. Okay, let's write this over here. At least I'm honest when I'm making mistakes here. Okay, well, not making mistakes, just when I'm when I'm being a bit stupid. Okay, so we've got that term here. I've got Q, and then I'm going to have a theta dot term here. So let's put that in. So let's say plus. In fact, that's the last term I've got, I think. Now I've got a theta dot term here as well. Yes, M theta star theta. So in terms of theta, I've got I've only got one thing, which is M W dot multiplied by minus G sine theta. So let's just call that here. Let's say M theta star is equal to minus M W dot multiplied by G 
sine theta naught. So that should be a perturbational theta here. There should be a prime there. And I've got one last term, which is delta E. And so delta E is multiplied by mw dot multiplied by z delta E plus m delta E here. Put this one in as well. Okay, so this one's the, the complicated expression for the longitudinal equations of motion. But this expression we've got here now is our pitching moment equation expressed in, in a format that we can allow to be put into state space form. We've got one last equation that we can include with these. So we had our, going back here, we've got our forward speed equation, heave equation and our pitching moment. We then, we've got an, um, an expression to relate the Q dot and the, th sorry, theta dot term and Q. So we can use that in these and that's just a linearized Euler pitch rate here. So let's zoom out a sec. So we've got one, two, and three, which are our longitudinal expressions. We're going to combine all of these. And we'll say in addition. Two expressions. One through three. We've also got the linearized pitch rate expression. The linearized expression for Euler pitch rate, rather, which was Q is equal to theta dot. So all of those together, let's call this one star four, all of those we can put then into state space format. And we can write out the linearized equation of longitude or the linearized equations of longitudinal motion in state space form. So let's write them out. So our left hand vector, our, which is effectively our, our x dot here, is u dot, w dot, Q dot and theta dot. So it's perturbational forward speed, and this should be theta prime here, really. Sorry, that's again. I introduced that nomenclature this semester, theta prime, because I'm, I'm I can't reliably write upper and lowercase theta and psi and phi to discriminate them from upper and lowercase. So the the subscript, sorry, the superscript prime indicates we've got this perturbational velocity. But if it's in this format, if it's in a vector with other perturbational terms, this has to be a perturbational term as well. So let's write these all out. Okay, so we're going to work out the things to go in this matrix. I'm going to drag some equations up here that are going to help us do this. Let's drag them up. Nope, it's not going to necessarily work. Oh, bugger. Let's have a look. Can I pull out this forward speed equation? Nope. I need to. Uh, let's just write, let's rewrite them out again. So I'll write these out again. We can hopefully just fast forward through this. So our forward speed equation was u dot is equal to x u u plus x w w minus g cosine theta naught theta prime. We've then got the heave equation 
w dot is equal to z u u z w w plus u e q minus g sine theta naught theta prime plus z de de then got I really like to copy this equation out because it's a big long horrible one to do so I'm going to copy this if I can It's bigger. It's not playing ball. There we go. We've got our expression there, and the last one is nice and easy to remember. The last one is just that theta dot is equal to q. So we can easily put these now into matrix formats. So we've got xu, xw, minus g, cosine theta dot. I haven't made this quite big enough. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, bugger. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller. XW, and then I need minus G cosine theta naught, and then I've got. N oh no, sorry, that should be. That's the wrong term, isn't it? Because this is multiplied by theta prime, which is down here. So this term needs to be swapped over. So I should have a zero here, minus g cosine theta naught here. Okay, do the same for the next one. What is zu, zw, u e, or this it should be u naught, sorry. That's a hangover from my changing of a, of a subscript zero to avoid any confusion with uh, with earth axes. Okay, so I've got all four terms in here. Um, I have no control term for the first expression. There's nothing involving the elevator. There is an elevator term in this last one, so a z delta e needs to go in here. Okay, in this next one, I've got m u star and w star m q star and m theta star. Remembering all of those are the sum of two separate terms. So if we go back down here, we remember that our mu star is equal to mu plus mw dot plus zu. So because we invented those star terms, they enable us to put it in this matrix format. And then this last one is 0, 0, 1, 0. And we've got one more term. I need to have m delta e star and 0 here. But this is exactly what we wanted to get. We wanted to get our linearized expression for longitudinal motion in state space format. So we've got this. Let's put a big box around it. This is exactly what we wanted. Let's um, even move this out to be on its own because it's surrounded by other things at the moment. It would be useful to look at this on its own. Okay, that is the linearized expression for longitudinal motion in state space format. So what we have here is, sorry, some x vector, some vector is equal to system matrix multiplied by the state vector plus control matrix multiplied by our control vector. I'm going to talk more about these in the next module because we'll find that we can actually get all of the aircraft behavior for longitudinal motion from this matrix here. And to get this matrix, we can get the characteristic equation based off of the determinant of this matrix 
and it's going to tell us everything we need to know about the longitudinal motion of the aircraft in terms of whether it's stable, what things like the period of oscillations are, what damping of different modes are. So let's just give this a name. Linearized equation of longitudinal motion. in concise form. And we're going to use the equations of motion in this format. Okay? It's, even though I said the dimensional the non-dimensional derivatives are more common in America, um, the textbook that I follow for a lot of analysis you is, is Louis Schmidt's book, still an American book, uses it in this format. Okay, this is the most useful form of these equations of motion. If we get the non-dimensional derivatives we're going to put them into this format. Because when we get these velocities out, we say we've got a perturbation of velocity of u and v. That's perturbational forward speed, perturbational heave velocity, perturbational pitch rate, and perturbational pitch attitude. So those those are useful for us. Okay. So we're going to use these, and we're going to use them in this format. So those I've sort of gone all over the page here, but we've done all of the stuff for the expressions on the left hand side for our. Um, for our three symmetric equations, we're now going to do the same thing with these expressions over here. Let me move these elsewhere on the page, just because I see that when I zoom in, it's going to cover my face a lot. That might be a good or a bad thing. Let's move these over here. Okay, so we're going to work with these now. And also, for the record, I'm aware that my hair is getting ridiculous. Didn't really want to go see a barber during COVID. Um, why not see if, see what ridiculous hairstyle it ends up being over the next couple of months? Um, and since I don't have to look professional for anyone, why not? But not talking about my hair, let's have a look at these again. So the equations that we've got here, this one here is our side slip equation. And then these next two, we've got these sort of coupled um, yawing and rolling equations. So we're going to see how we can separate them. So let's see what we can do. We'll start with the sides of the equation and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to divide by m. Okay, let's do... I'm not going to bother copying it up and hopefully you've got this copied down nicely. Let's say we've got v dot is equal to y v. There's a term missing here, sorry, there should be a v in here. Let's just put it in there. Okay, there should have been a v multiplied by that, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So let's say it's equal to y v multiplied by v. I'm having trouble keeping this on page where I can still see it. Go through my notes on here now. Minus u naught multiplied by r. And then we're going to have g cosine cosine theta naught multiplied by the perturbational roll attitude. And there must be a term missing on here, because I, I know there's another term in these. There needs to be a rudder term in this side slip rate. So let me just check and see what was in the accompanying notes, because that tells me if I need to change it or not. With you guys being the first time I'm using these new notes through, this is a bit of a shame. Sorry, guys, I don't mean to have you guys be the... Okay, there should be an extra term in here. So back to these lateral directional equations of motion. I know there's a there's a rudder term in here as well. And so it will be dy on d delta r. Delta r, which means there needs to be one in here. So it would have been in here. I'm not going to bother writing it down there because all we're going to end up with is 
y delta r multiplied by delta r. So we've got all of, again these are yv is defined as partial derivative of y with respect to v defined at the trim state multiplied by 1 over m in this case. Okay, so we've then got this nice simpler expression for the sides of the equation. Let's have a look at our next expression. So let's take this one. So because they're coupled, because we've got pitching and rolling rates in each of these, then what we're going to do is let's say divide this top one, we're going to divide by Ixx. Or the rolling moment of inertia. Then we end up with, and I'm going to take the um, yawing rate over to the other side. So we end up with P dot is equal to Ixz divided by Ixx multiplied by r dot and then I'm going to have some new expressions so I'm going to have here dl by dv divided by ixx so we can just call that lv lv v plus lp p plus lr r plus L D R D R or delta R I should say plus L delta A delta A. So again we're just going to remind ourselves that L V must be defined as D L R D V defined at the trim state divided by one over I X X. And because of this equation, okay we can always remember if this equation we're looking at turning this into the rolling equation of motion because we've got p dot on the left hand side so we must have divided it by the rolling moment of inertia. We do the same thing with this equation, let's switch to another pen colour, let's switch to purple. So we must be dividing by the yawing moment of inertia now. And we end up with r dot is equal to ixz divided by izz multiplied by p dot plus n v v plus n p p I know p p <laughs> made me giggle n r R plus N delta R delta R plus N delta A delta A. So we've got an expression for P dot which has R dot in it, an expression for R dot which has P dot in it. Okay, this is a bit of a nasty one. I've done this by hand to go through and, and, and check before and I encourage you to do it to make sure you can you can actually understand how these equations work. But what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this bad boy into here. Okay? So after a little manipulation, what you would end up with is p dot 1 minus ixz. Let me just double check this because I'm not confident I've got it written down correctly in my notes. I want to make sure I give you guys the right bit to look at.
Yep, that's right. That's oh no, that is right in my notes. I x z squared. So we've got the product of inertia squared divided by I x x I z z. is equal to LV plus the ratio of IXZ on IXX and V multiplied by V plus LP plus IXZ on IXX and P. You're probably spotting the pattern here. So we've got the same sort of thing, LV plus the ratio between the product of inertia and the moment of inertia around the rolling axis. And the same thing here with LP. So we'll see this pattern for the rest of the terms now. So we've got the rate, of, so we've got the rudder deflection. Aileron deflection LDA plus IXZ on IXX NDA non disclosure agreement. It's actually a delta A, not a DA, sorry, that's my bad linguistics there. So this is now a nasty looking expression, but we can say, okay, well, this one minus term here, actually 1 minus IXZ squared on IXX IZZ, that can be written as IXX, well just put the 1 as into the fraction, so it's going to end up as IXX IZZ minus IXZ squared divided by IXX IZZ then we can rewrite this whole thing. We'll do a very similar thing to how we how we sort of combined these. So we said that these star terms were the combination of one derivative plus the product of two others. We'll do something similar over here. So we'll rewrite this whole thing. We'll say that our P term can be rewritten as P dot is equal to LV star multiplied by V plus LP star multiplied by P plus L delta R star delta R plus L delta A. Am I missing a term here? No, I'm not. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. V, P, R, D, R, V, P. I've missed, I have missed a term up here. I missed my Let's move this across. So in here, there should be a term for R. Let's move this across. There we go, no one's the wiser. No one's the wiser is a terrible thing to say during a lecture, actually. I'm hoping you're all getting wiser during these. So let's get rid of that one I just did, and we'll now say, okay, so now I need to put this in here. So I need L R star multiplied by R plus L D R star multiplied by D R plus L DA star multiplied by DA. So we've got now, these are slightly more complex in the way they're actually defined. So LV star is actually equal to IX, because we need to divide by that whole left-hand term here. So we would have divided this term by this term here. So we end up with, Ixx, 
I Z Z divided by I X X I Z Z minus I X Z squared multiplied by L V plus I X Z on I X X and V. So we've got these derivative terms. You can go through and see the rest. So this LP style would be the same. It's the same outside bit, but we'd have LP and NV here as well going through. And we can then do the same thing. We just work in the other direction. So we can get a similar expression for our roll rate for the R dot term. And I'm just going to skip to that. So this one here, P, this is often referred to as the rolling moment equations of motion. I'm just going to write out the equation of motion for the yawing moment equation of motion. So let's say r dot, so I'm going to do all of those in one step, is equal to nv star multiplied by v. That's a, a new I've written there, not a v. nv plus np star multiplied by p plus n d. No, I need to put an r term in here nr star multiplied by r plus n dr star multiplied by dr plus n da star multiplied by da. And similarly, we're going to see for these that you'd have, let's find a color I haven't used yet. Uh, I'm running out of colors now. Light blue, let's try that. Okay, so similarly for these, that's, yeah, that's visible. You would have NV star is going to be defined very similarly to these LV star terms, just with different um, expressions down here. So I'm going to have IXX, IZZ divided by IXX, IZZ minus IXZ squared multiplied by NV plus IXZ on IXX LV. Okay, so we just have the N and the V swapped around. So LV star is LV plus the ratio between the product of inertia and the moment of inertia multiplied by NV. And then this dirty gray expression outside, NV star similarly is NV plus the ratio between IXZ and that one here. Okay, so this one is often referred to as our Ewing moment of an answer, our Ewing moment equation of motion. And so we've got two extra things to have in here now. So we've got three equations of motion now. We've got this first one, side slip equation of motion. Let's call this star five. We've got the Ewing moment equation of motion. Which we had, that's right, star five is up there, star six, and star seven here. We want two more things we need to include. So we need to use the your rate and roll rate kinematic equations, which because remember we included the a the Euler pitch rate equation here in the longitudinal equations of motion. We now need to include the other um, Euler linearized Euler rates in the lateral directional equations of motion. Let's write all of the letters in the word remaining. So those two expressions that we have, those are already amenable to be written in state space form. So we've got our Euler, um, our Euler psi is equal to R sec 
of the pitch attitude, the, the trim pitch attitude. So this is a perturbation of um, rate of change of heading is equal to the body your rate multiplied by the sec of the trim pitch attitude. Okay, so we've derived all these previously. We've got them all from before. We're just going to include them now. Okay, so if you want to think where this came from, actually, is what we had this written out in our derivation. It was originally r is equal to psi dot cosine theta e. So I've just rearranged that. Um, and then the last one that we've got in here, we have got one last term, which is our perturbational roll attitude. So perturbational Euler roll is equal to body roll rate plus perturbational trim. Sorry, perturbational uh, your attitude multiplied by the sine of our pitch attitude, okay, the trim pitch attitude. So these then become eight and nine. So we've got five equations to write in matrix form now. I'm just gonna write these straight out in matrix form. So this was five through nine. write these out so we're gonna have a state factor that's got five terms in there so we're gonna have perturbational side slip perturbational roll rate perturbational yaw rate perturbational Euler roll attitude and perturbational Euler yaw attitude so we're going to have a 5 by 5 matrix. I'm just going to write the terms in here because I can never choose a matrix to be large enough at the beginning. So this first row is YV, YV, and then we have 0, minus U0, G cosine, theta naught, and 0. We've then got LB star. LP star, LR star, 0 and 0, NV star, NP star, NR star, 0 and 0, 0, 1, tangent of the pitch attitude, zero and zero. So this is a mainly empty matrix. Zero, zero, sec, zero, zero. So we have V, P, R, Phi, Psi. And then we've got a five by two as our controls, because we've got two controls for lateral directional motion, whereas we only had one for longitudinal. So we've got delta R and delta A. We've got rudder and aileron. We've got Y, DR, and zero. L, DR star, L, DA star. N, DR star, N, and DA star, zero, 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 zero. So let's bring this whole equation that we've just produced up here and we'll talk about it next to this one here. Okay, so We've now got two expressions. We've got here the linearized equation of longitudinal motion in concise form, and we've now also got the linearized equation of lateral directional motion in concise form. A 
I realise I've written linearized equation of motion of lateral directional motion in concise form. I think you'll forgive me. So let's think about what we've got. So we've got a in the longitudinal equations of motion, we've got the longitudinal states, so perturbational forward speed, perturbational heave speed, perturbational body pitch rate, perturbational Euler pitch is a function of whatever those perturbations are, or sorry, the, the, the time rate of change of those is equal to whatever those are, plus the elevated deflection angle. So we can then remember that for a given trim state, if we're in trim, all of these are zero. And then if we put a control in bit in, we can see that these will then change this is effectively a set of coupled ordinary differential equations that allow us to look at the aircraft longitudinal response to elevated deflection. And then similarly here, we've got the aircraft lateral directional equation of motion. So we've got perturbational side slip, perturbational roll rate, perturbational yaw rate, perturbational yaw attitude, and per perturbational uh, heading. Perturbational, yeah, perturbational heading. So then this is a function of, again, all of those derivatives, which, are, which have an initial state of zero, because this is just a, an or, a set of ordinary differential equations, and then our two lateral directional um, controls, which is delta R and delta A. So this is you know, what we've been trying to get. We've been trying to get this stuff here. This is, this is all we want. We want to use these, and we're going to use them to relate things like, you know, what's that, you know what do we want to know? We, well, we want to know. What's the relationship between, say, applying a, an elevator change, what happens to the aircraft angle of attack? Because we know that's not a, that's not a simple relationship because then actually there's a whole bunch of things that, that feed into that, the way that the elevator deflection feeds into the pitching moment around the center of gravity, the way that the wing lift changes with the change in angle of attack, and then the whole relationship that we had looking at things in stacking stability we can now, if we know the value of these derivatives, which are just numbers, then we can then come up with a transfer function relating things like the elevator deflection and u and w, or u and w dot. So we can look at the change of the elevator deflection angle with, so look at the change of angle of attack with the change of the elevator deflection angle. And the same for these now. So we can do the same with the rudder and the aileron. So these are in dimensional but concise form and this is the most useful way we can use them. We're going to look next lecture at the procedure involved in non-dimensionalizing them because you guys need to understand it and need to know it um, but we're going to mainly look at how we take non-dimensional derivatives and put them into these for or this format such that we can then look at system stability and we're going to go from understanding these equations in how we can look at things like make a transfer function relating elevated deflection angle, say, to forward speed perturbation. So that would be a state variable. And we're also going to look at how can we then, say, look at the relationship between, I'm going to bring this back up, look at the relationship between elevated deflection and angle of attack. Angle of attack is a non-state variable. Remember, our states are just UVW, PQR, phi, theta, psi. So we're going to look at how we can then include the other things we might want to know, like side slip. Actual side slip is not V, 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 okay, this is related to our side slip. We want to look at how we can take these equations and make some inferences about aircraft motion now. So let's just remember where we started today. Let's go right back to the beginning as I like to do because it hopefully doesn't give you motion sickness and just helps you understand things. We had the, once we worked out our linearized expressions for the forces and moments, we put them into our equations of motion and then we had the symmetrical, the longitudinal ones, and the asymmetrical lateral directional. So we took all of these and we then said, well, let's let's get the term that we want on the left-hand side. So for forward speed, it's u dot. For um, heaving motion, it's w dot. And for pitching motion, it's q dot. So these were sort of easy to come up with expressions for. We just had to introduce some new terms, like x u is the partial derivative divided by mass. Same with this one here, this was pretty easy. Um, but for the pitch rate, we had to invent some new terms just to help us. And th because we've invented those terms, that's enabled us to put them in state space form. Otherwise, we'd have to have lots of, it would have been a real, I mean, we still could have put them in this format, but it would have been a real pain to do so. Um, and then we did the same with the lateral directional equations of motion. 
and we know that we had to do some real magic with the products and moments of inertia. So I encourage you to go through these in your own time and, and just check, do you understand where this has been done? Can you, do the, can you follow the derivation? Um, because I'm not going to ask you to, to repeat the derivation, I just want you to understand what we've done. And then we're going to use these bad boys to do some cool things about aeroplanes. Okay? So the old tagline for my notes used to be, we're deriving the soul of the aircraft. And that's what these two matrices are. These two A matrices, I like to think of being the soul of the aircraft because they dictate how the aircraft wants to fly, what it wants to do if it's perturbed. So we're going to use them, we're going to do some cool things. Um, please remember, try and find some stability derivatives for different aircraft. There's loads of examples out there. If you can find them in non-dimensional or dimensional format, we'll be able to use them in this class. So thank you for tuning in again. If there's questions, put it on Slack, and I look forward to seeing you all later this week. Cheers.